Hey guys, Kirkasa here, and welcome back to some more PSO2 New Genesis, where today we're going to be talking about creative spaces, kind of like a beginner's guide or walkthrough to all the systems involving that. For those of you who don't know, creative spaces are your own personal quarters or personal area to build pretty much anything that you want. So building buildings, places, objects, mini games, anything that you can do with your imagination. But before we even get into all that, how do you actually unlock these creative spaces for yourself? Well, you need to get to uh, the central city where I'm at now. And that's like pretty uh, soon into the story. You just need to like complete the tutorial in the beginning of the game. And then just do like a couple main missions here. Uh, basically getting up to where you have to go to Mount Magnus. And that is where you should be able to talk to Arche here and get a main quest for her. This main quest being the Ark's Architectural Researcher's Request. So once you have that, then you can start uh, going to your area and learning more about it. Uh, she also gives like a set of uh, side quests when you uh, talk to her as well. That can like help you guide with some of the basics, but it isn't like too in depth. It doesn't help with nearly uh, everything. But once you have started all that, you can access your creative space by going to any Ryuki device. And then it's the bottom option down below. And then here uh, you can choose your own creative space to edit in any way and this is where you get a uh, one free space for everybody there's an extra space for all premium users and then there's a rental space that you can get by spending uh, extra ac every month uh if you really want that third space this is also where you can visit other people's spaces so like featured creative spaces uh, official ones by sega as well as your friends or other previous visited spaces if you already have visited some there is also a, an alternative way to access that kind of menu you go to your communications tab down below and then go to uh creative space it's the same thing but now let's actually go to our own creative space here so when you first get inside this is what it should basically look like just a little shack here with not too much going on and there's uh, nothing inside but there is a couple important things right off the bat this little terminal here and this tree let's actually take a look at what this terminal does so this brings up the creative space menu which gives a ton of options dealing with your creative space so the first little section here is the add build parts this allows you to buy parts with different currencies to then use in your spaces so some examples are like floors uh, walls, windows, stairs, a whole bunch of different things that you can choose from. They all have different point costs. And this uh, first option is actually a new currency called Genesis Points. I'll explain more about that after we go through this menu. But the second option is buying it with Star Gems. And this is all items from base game, just in NGS spec for these creative spaces, since they're so much different from the personal quarters from the past. But in here, there's a ton of different options from like the early days like the gothic modern and classic style that you can uh, choose from with all of these different furniture options and um, with these right now there's a 40 percent off their cost until like july something like that these are actually way less than what they usually are so if you want to uh, go for them now that would be uh, the smartest way to go about it for other parts in the game there's like limited time promotions like this next week there'll be a sonic collab which will give us furniture parts as well as just like other login bonuses that they'll be doing throughout the game. But there's also like AC packs that you can buy. So spending like some real money in the AC store. Right now there's a couple of options where you can get a resort pack or some fancy uh, furniture like a wooden deck and pool and whatnot. Then there's also the Sonic Collab Creative Space Pack has a ton of Sonic items inside. For these parts, most of the time, they'll just ask you if you want to bind them immediately. But if they end up in your inventory in some way, you can always just go to this Creative Space Terminal, go to the third option, Bind Build Parts, and then just click on the item that you want to bind. Then you just press yes, and it'll bind it to your account. There are also ways to get these build parts through drops. Uh, one that I know right now is by killing the regular Rappies in the open world. They have a low drop chance to drop, I think, a Rappy Hot Pot or something like that. I think there's something in the Ordinal Tower rank 7 from one of the bosses in there, but it's also another rare drop that I don't know quite what it is yet. Regardless of what that may be, there will be more additions to these parts as time goes on, so just look forward to that. Moving on uh, with this creative space menu, though, we have the creative space settings with change music. So if you have gotten any music discs bound to your ship, you can play any of them in your creative space with this menu. You can also have it play multiple songs if you want by creating a playlist 
for your creative space by just choosing multiple songs, I believe up to like 25 or so. So you can not have it just repeat the same song over and over. But to the next option, there is change time. This allows you to set an exact time that you want in the day. So if you want it to be daytime or nighttime or like a sunset, whatever you want, you can do that. If you don't want the time to continuously change, you can just uncheck mark this to stop advancing the time. So the next option, this is changing your privacy settings of your particular space to open it up to other people like friends, alliance members, or everyone. And you can also change the name of this space and give like some categories and tags like the lookbook feature uh, with your outfits. Um, but for the next couple of things, this is just resetting your area in general. So the first option is resetting all the build parts uh, placement. So as we you know, start building here, if you really don't like the setup, like you have a whole bunch of random things, and you just want to reset the whole area, you can do so with that button. And it's like his confirmation, like, yes, this will undo everything. Are you sure? Like, yes. Then it goes back to the default state, so all those, like, walls are gone. Uh, for the next thing, this is resetting the terrain, to, like the actual landscape, because you can actually change that here, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, let's just mess around with it for now. Then you can just reset it with that option to go back to a flat, uh, face. And this one here allows you to adjust other players' edit permissions. If you want your friends to be able to, uh, change your area as well and put parts down, you can let that happen, uh, with them being nearby in your space. Or if they already have edit permission, you can edit it to where they can't do so anymore. But they do need to be nearby you to give them permission. That means you have to open up your space uh, to do that. And for this last option, it's a little bit more complicated, but if you have something that got changed with the function system that we'll go into a little bit later, then it will reset that to the default state. So I have this hidden button here where if it gets um, pressed, it like shows up. But if I press this button, it goes back to that default state that I had before. But now let's move into talking about the Genesis points. So this involves this tree over here. This is called the GP tree or Genesis points tree, where you can claim this every single day to get some points that you can use for buying parts or in a Genesis point shop that Arche has. With these trees, they give you like a random amount based on what the kind of tree it is. So this is a gold tree here, which is also kind of randomized throughout the week. I got 315 points out of it. But that doesn't matter too much because you can get a total of 1,250 points by collecting from all trees in general. So if you go to other people's spaces, you can claim from their trees too, up until that limit. So as shown earlier, you can access other people's spaces with uh, these different tabs uh, down below. Let's go to the first one here, Dura's house. Uh, a lot of the time, people just put their GP trees right in front next to the initial uh teleport spot but sometimes they have it hidden so if you're trying to speed run it you may want to go to other people's space yeah, i don't see it right away right now but maybe it's inside take a look and yeah, it looks like it's right here if you just uh press on this you can claim the points so i got another 315 there but you might find uh, different kinds of trees so it isn't exactly the same every time but that's just one of the first methods to get genesis points there's actually other ways too there is a weekly Tasks or like a couple of weekly tasks, one of them being claiming your own tree four times within the week. And I'll give you 2,500 Genesis points. I believe there's another one that may have been finished already. Yeah, visit other people's creator spaces. You have to do that 10 times. That gives you another set of 2,500 points. But then uh, for a third method, it's in, actually in the mission pass in the first uh, set of 10 tiers. Increments of 1,000 tiers, so 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and then 5,000. You can get that every month if you at least get that much. I didn't see it anywhere else in the mission pass, but it looks like you just got to complete those early uh, tiers. For the last method of these points, there will be limited time tasks from time to time. I completed all of them right now, but these last until July 4th for this set. These just give tons of justice points, 1,500 each for just doing all these different kinds of things. So just go through that if you want a lot of points now yeah, besides buying these build parts here for genesis points i did mention that there is a shop with that npc arche that we saw earlier so let's return back to uh the arc space or the central city now that we're back in the city let's talk to arche here you'll have a second option where it says exchange genesis points 
Then inside, there's a ton of materials that you can buy with these Genesis points for actually pretty cheap. So if you have like excess points where you don't really need any more parts, or if you just don't really care for doing the building and creative spaces, you can spend these points here. They're still valuable to you. Uh, the big ticket items, I think, are the Drake Keeper 4s and Ultra Credit 4s and the Aegis Integra right now. Uh, even the Ajax armor, if you're still like kind of new to the game. And one more thing about these Genesis points, there's apparently a cap to how many you can have at one time. I think that cap is 100,000. So as long as you're spending in this shop and buying the build parts, you shouldn't really run into that issue. But, you know, maybe if you really don't want pretty much all of these items, you might get to that cap. So you're going to have to spend it in some way if you don't want to, like, miss out. I'm guessing the reason why Sega put a cap on these points in the first place is so that players continuously spend them. And then also, if they introduce any new set of parts in this shop here, they don't want players to just buy them all out on day one when they're introduced. But with that's all out of the way. Let's finally get into the edit mode with these creative spaces. This edit mode can be accessed by this little hammer button down here. For me, that's middle mouse click that puts you into that mode. But if you want to access the whole menu, which gives you all the tools and all the parts, you press the same button again. And that brings all the parts up, so all in the different categories. This first one's like materials, and this is like some other furnishings, nature, etc., with all these different things. But then all of the tools that you have access to are at the top here. So you have this, which just exits out of edit mode. Uh, here uh, is flying. So you can actually fly around the creative mode uh, for Minecraft if you want to. And then going back to this here, we have the move tool. So moving objects around, uh, deleting or removing them, painting or changing the color of the different objects. There's some certain settings that you can change with this one here of each part raising or lowering the terrain and then leveling the terrain out with all of these different options you can actually put them on a build palette this works much the same as the sub palette with the rest of the game where you just put it onto a different number and you can select it outside the menu for quick access but basically you just have to use this menu you don't have to use the build palette if you don't want to because you can just click on these individually too if you want to use them or the build palette's a little wonky, at least on mouse and keyboard. You press R to add to the palette, and then you would press Enter to add something. So let's say I want to add the Sonic thing here. Well, it isn't letting me, like, press on it. So when I press Enter, it's actually going to have the thing that I had selected prior uh, with this uh, loop here. So the way that you want to actually add something to a palette is it to hover over something first that you want to put on. So if I want this Sonic statue, then I press R. And then I would select the spot with the arrow keys or the mouse down below. And then I would press enter. If you want to remove anything from this build palette, you just got to press R again and then just press G as it says right there. Or whatever other button that it says for your controller. And once you do that, it'll just go away. And then if you want to just completely reset the palette to its default with basically nothing on it, then you can press this here and then say yes. Uh, for me personally, I like to put all the tools on the build palette for quick access because I don't want to really just open and close this build menu when I'm interacting with the different parts. Let's get around to messing with the parts now though. So let me just grab a foundation here since everybody has that by default and just start placing it around. So yeah, you can place it on the ground, in the middle of the air if you want to, on top of each other. But there's actually more options to do when you're placing parts. So for me, when I hold shifts, so kind of like switching the weapon palette like you would in the other gameplay, there's more options. You have rotation, scale, and max placement distance. And for these, they're pretty straightforward. If you want to just rotate it around, you use WASD to rotate it on a certain axis. And if you wanted to change the axis, you do R or X to go around or using the mouse wheel. And then you just rotate it just the same. Um, if you want to reset its position to default, you just press space as it shows there. For controls on controller, I don't know what they are myself, but they'll always say down below here or sometimes up in the upper right with this menu. But for the next option, we have the scale. This works pretty much in the same exact way, except there's an additional option where you can scale it in all directions at once. So if I just go up with the W key, it goes bigger. And if I do uh, the S key, it gets smaller. But if I want to change the scaling axis, I just press R. So this is the Z axis. It moves it that way. If I do it again, make it taller with the Y axis. And then I can do the same with the X axis there. And then just the same, you can press space 
reset it to its default. So the last option here, you can change the max placement distance. This is just like how far away from your character it will be uh, when you have it out there. So if you kind of adjust it, it'll be at like two units or two blocks away. If I push it out even more, I can place it farther from myself. That's those three options there. Uh, you can change between them with G and H, but all the time with this, you have to hold shift to be on that other palette, which is kind of annoying with keyboard. Uh, I think on controller, it's just holding a trigger, so it isn't as bad. So that's just like one annoying aspect of it, but it, I don't know, you kind of get used to it over time. But also while you're holding shift, you can press right click to go into an extra build option menu for more uh, options. So you can hide the grid if you want to, uh, but I just always use it because it makes it easier. Uh, then you can have it snap to the grid by per block or per half block. So it'd be like it's a closer distance with the items, or you can just have it not snap to the grid at all and just be free placement. But then for the other options here, you can have it interfere with other build arts. So if you have that don't use, I can actually put it in the middle of objects now instead of it being, you know, on top. For these last three on here, these change the increments at which the rotation angle, the scaling ratio, and the placement distance happen. Uh, with these, they usually snap into like certain spots, like 45 degrees with the rotation, then 25% with the scaling, and the distance is like at interval, intervals of like two. If you turn all of that off, it's more of like a free form like rotation, scaling, etc. So like I can do it at exact degrees instead of at every 45. So then if I change the axis here, I can just do it for each and every uh, one. And then the same with the scaling. And you can just see all of those numbers up above if you want an exact number when you're doing all of these things. Of course, that isn't everything that you can actually do with these parts. There's more tools up above here. So I just kind of go through them one by one. So yeah, this first one here is the move. That just allows you to pick up parts you've already placed down and move them around. So you just press left click again, and that just places it there, and just move it wherever. But say if you like pick it up, like something accidentally, but you want to put it back, you just right click instead, like this back arrow. And that just leaves it there. If we go back to the build menu for something else, like let's say this interior floor, because I picked up an object like that, it actually keeps all of the parameters of the rotation and the scaling if it's allowed to, and I can place it just the same as that one. But if I want to, like, say, reset it, I can still with that space bar, make it flat. Let's say, hmm, I actually don't want to continue using this flat surface now. I actually want to go back to the parameters of this with the rotation and scaling. Well, you can actually pick this up with the move tool. You can just, like, undo it if you want to. And then go into the menu again, place the interior floor, and it'll have the same parameters as whatever you picked up. That's pretty much everything with the move tool, but if you hold shift while using it, you can actually access the other tools as well without going back to this build menu. But for the next tool, it is the remove one. This one's pretty simple. It just removes any objects you hover over and either press left click or right click and it just makes it disappear. Unfortunately, there is no undo button in the game yet. But that's been a much requested feature, so hopefully eventually it is a thing. There's also another way to delete parts. So whenever you are going to build something, the right click also deletes something if you're hovering over something else. If I right click here, it makes it disappear. For the next tool, we have the change color one, where you can just change the colors of the different objects. This is kind of different from object to object because this one gives two, but others may give one change color or none. But when you click on that, just like this and they have a number of different colors to choose from it isn't like a color wheel but changing that changes the primary color up front here and this is the secondary color make that uh, yellow it doesn't show in the front here but this is actually the underneath after you've just painted an object you can then press right click on others to instantly take those colors so if you want to do a lot of build parts fast you can do it that way that's pretty much everything to the color tool. If you want to set it back to default, you have to click on these and then use default color with that. And they can just use the right click tool on these to take in the default colors too. But uh, for the last tool, this is the settings, which can be quite a bit. So to show this tool off, I put a number of different objects in a row here, as we'll see why in a second. But with this foundation, there's two different kinds of basic settings. 
the show build parts and build part collision detection. So with this, you can hide the build parts. So in edit mode, you get like a kind of outline or transparency. But if I get out of edit mode, you can't see it at all. It still has its collision, so you can still run into it. So if you want like a hidden platform, you can do that with the settings. For this other option, this actually turns off that collision. So I'm actually going to switch these settings around so you can have both off if you want to. But yeah, you can have like a hidden passageway, I guess. So it looks like there's something in the way. You can actually just go right through it. But now let's see what these other objects have. So there's a lot more options with certain build parts depending on their functionality. So what other things we have here is build part access function with this teleporter, send receive connects, linked teleporter number, and a whole bunch of send and receive uh, connections here. So let's just kind of go through it a little bit at a time. I'm not going to do it for every part in the game, but uh, for this one here, uh, with access function, normally you can go up to it and press E to teleport to another linked teleporter. So if I turn that off, I can't press E on it anymore. But since I didn't turn it off on this one, I can still use this one to teleport to the other if I wanted to. So this next option with send slash receive connects, this either allows or doesn't allow all of these connections to send out or be received in for this particular object. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, but this other one, this changes the linked teleporter number. So if you wanted a whole bunch of teleporters on your map, you may want to have them set up differently. So like a two to the two teleporter and a three to a three. This basically, if I try to teleport now, it'll say like, oh, the same number is not found anymore because I changed that here. So put that back to a one and then it'll allow me to teleport in. If you have multiple, like three, let's say with the same number, then I'll just like randomly choose out of the options. So eventually I'll like go through the other teleporter, like right there. But now let's take a look at another build part here. So this is the timer cube. It has similar things up above, but it has other kind of basic settings. So upon receiving a connect, it can increase the time for a certain amount or decrease by a certain amount, which those get plugged into other options down here with the function system. And then also just the number of seconds at which to send a connect out to other objects. So these can just like function pretty differently from each other with every single one. Some objects even don't have any settings. And there's so many different things that you can do with these different parts that I can't really show all of it in the one video here. But I do want to give some examples with like this connection system just to show kind of how it all works. So for this one, let's just put back on that send and receive. So let's say... I want to um, enable the access functions because that's still turned off by default. So to do that, we'll have this uh, enable build part access detection be on a one. So whenever it receives a one from something, then it'll let me use the teleporter again with the E button. So let's put down uh, a button here, let's say. In its settings, there's this connect send condition with the switch on. So if I press on the button, it will send out a number when I have this checked. So we'll have this checked here and it'll be the same number one as the teleporter thing. So right now I can't access it. I can't press E to teleport. But once I press this, it'll enable that functionality because we had that connected. So now I can teleport to one of the other teleporters. Let's try to take it a step further with some other things. Let's say with this access switch, this will actually be turned on as well on the one and then let's say i don't know like this teleporter over here will actually hide itself when the button is pressed and then this one over here will i don't know disable the access detection on the one so if i press the one now they'll do all of those things at once the teleporter over there doesn't really look too hidden but because we're in edit mode we can still see it yeah it is disappeared but i should be able to like still teleport to it after enough tries here. Yeah. You can still teleport to it or even use the teleporter. Yeah, this one is turned off, so I can't use this particular one to teleport to others. Yeah, you can connect a whole bunch of things at once with each other. 
or even have it be on different functions. So if I get off the button, other things can happen too. So maybe like this turns off when I get off uh, the other button. And then maybe this foundation, oh, I can't do anything with foundation because as we saw earlier, it doesn't have those functions. Um, let's see, what else could I do here? Hey, maybe, maybe this teleporter when I get off the button hides as well. We'll press that. Then we'll get off. And then we'll do those things too. So yeah, there's a lot of connections that you can do with this thing and it can get very, very complicated. I don't really want to get through here with this kind of just beginners-ish guide uh, for the creative spaces. But if you want to check out another video I made that goes a little bit more detail with certain useful setups with this thing, you can go check that out with the link above or down below. Yeah, with this settings tool and this function connect system, they are very powerful and you can do so many things with it. You can make obstacle courses, puzzles, mini games, almost anything that you can do with your imagination within the limits of these build parts. And speaking of limits, all these, as you've noticed already, they do have individual limits. When we look at the build parts here, you can kind of notice some of them right away with this foot switch B. It's going to be rotated on the Y axis, so the others just can't be touched. The scaling can only scale in all directions at once and can't be individually scaled in one of those axes. And this can't be color changed. That just kind of goes for all of these. They have their own limitations. Uh, some of them have like placement limits, so it can only do so many of them. Uh, I know like with some of these uh, lights over here, there's a limit to how many you can have in a certain area, even though it says like 200 placement limit, that's just for the entire creative space. Uh, but yeah, there's just that across the board. You just gotta be careful with it. For the creative spaces overall, there's a limit as well with how many items that you can place inside. That is shown with a bar in the upper left, which is contributed differently with each object. So this might be less value contributed versus the teleport, for instance, because the teleporter is way more involved than this foundation. And also with the scaling of like a same object, the bigger the scale, I believe it is a bigger number, or bigger toll on that. So it, there isn't any exact amount that we really know of yet, except for uh, Fresh Dynamite on Twitter here that I saw a while back, uh, placed 520 cats and then they reached the limit. So maybe that is something to go off of. Let's move on to the last couple of tools that you can use. These both involve the terrain. So this one changes the terrain height. So if you left click, it raises the terrain. And if you right click, then it lowers it. You can also hold shift here to increase the scaling. So if I press R, then it actually widens the area that it gets raised or lowered. And then you can also make it smaller too. So it's only like a block or so. That's all there pretty much is to that one, but the other one actually levels out the terrain. So if you don't want all this, it levels it to where you are standing currently. So I'm standing on this kind of level ground. So if I press on these, it levels it to that point. But if I say stand down in this divot and I level these other spots and actually goes down to where this is at. If you are flying, it works kind of the same way. It isn't going to go to the level of your character. It's going to go to the level of the ground that is directly beneath you. But if I level over here, it's going to go downwards instead of up to where I am at. But if I hover over to this mountain here, then it'll raise everything else that I'm trying to level up to that mountain point. So it might be a little bit difficult to use, but you'll get more used to it as time goes on. Then just the same as the raising and lowering, if you hold shift and then press R or X or whatever other buttons it shows on controller, you can change the scaling of the leveling of the terrain. That was all of the tools that you can use in the creative spaces, but that actually isn't everything that I wanted to talk about. There's another concept that is pretty important too, and that is making blueprints. So these are designs that you can save that are up to 20 of them where you can take a set of parts and kind of save that instead of just rebuilding everything piece by piece. Just to show what I mean here, I have a piano by Cruz from a different space. And you can just place a piano just like that instead of making it yourself over and over again individually. So I can just keep placing that. And it's like actually like 50 or 60 parts in one. As you can see, this could be incredibly useful for complicated messes that you want to repeat over and over again. So like these pianos, whole buildings, whatever you want to do. But how do you actually do this for yourself? We well, you need to actually put down a design terminal. 
Let's just get by default. And then you face it in the direction of the mass that you want to copy. So we access it here, and then we do set design area, and this will put up a box right in front of it. So this can be changed with the right width to the left, either increase or decrease up to 25, and then the height as well as the depth. So this is a up to 50 by 50 by 50 cube. And you can also change the start point so you can make it go farther away if you want to, up to 50 spaces away too. It's actually a really nice feature as long as it doesn't go out of the bounds of this cube that you can make. Once you're satisfied with the design area for this blueprint, you can just hold E. But sometimes if you catch the wrong items, then it won't allow you to uh, copy it because like the initial teleporter, GP tree, and the fitter space terminal just can't be copied. So you'll have to abandon the changes and make sure that those are not included in your box. Let's do something a little bit smaller here with the design that doesn't include those objects. So we'll just leave it like that. Then it shows you how many of each object is used and what objects there are. And then you can edit the design information of it, like give it a name and uh, tag it for sharing with others. But then you can just uh, save this for yourself in one of the blueprint spots that you have. I just put in 20 there. And then you can also share it with other people. So right now it's unshared. So nobody, if they went into this space, could grab my design. But if I want to let others do so, then I could share it. So then I could um, just place it in one of those. And then my space is saying that it's currently unshared. So like, it can't even be shared with people because the, it's not open. So let's open that up too. And then now people can start grabbing this design if they want to. Now let's use this for ourselves. So you can access that in the build menu in this last tab with designs. I'm going to scroll down to what I had. And now I can just place it as many times as I want in my space up until I reach that, you know, placement limit up here. But there's a few things with these um, blueprints that kind of throw it off a little bit. So you can't individually modify the items in here as a blueprint. They're all considered one object now. So I can't like change the settings at all. And I can't, uh, you know, delete things individually. I have to delete like the whole thing. Essentially, you can't do anything with them as a blueprint other than just place them down. You can't even like once they're placed, move them. You have to yeah, delete it and then place it again. It's very awkward. Uh, another thing that is kind of frustrating with it is like if you copy, say, like the buttons and stuff that have functions on them, you actually don't transfer the functions in and they no longer really do anything. So if I copied this uh, button into a blueprint, then I can still press on it and stuff, but then it wouldn't like do anything with any of the interactions that I might have copied inside that blueprint. Despite all that though, I still think it's nice to have versus not having it at all because it is great for making decoration like things so many times over. Let's actually try to find somebody else's design that we can copy and learn more about that. So here in the menu that I just opened, you can actually search designs. So you can either search by tags or by name, but let's just search cool here. There should be something. We have a dongo stand and a small base turret. So let's go to the dongo stand. So actually, when you look at these, it tells you what objects this item is made of. And then it lets you teleport to the critter space to then go try to grab it. But yeah, the ones that are grayed out are parts that I do not have. But we'll go there anyways to show something that's pretty important. So here is their dongo stand that this person made. So we're going to try to download this design. So it actually allows us to do so even without the parts. And it even when we try to download it, asks us if we want to purchase the parts that were missing. Um, it tells you the cost of everything. So like 30 star gems for this, 1750 for that, 750 for that one. And so if I buy all those, it'll have a full blueprint. Let's just not purchase those. And it lets me still download the design. Let's actually go back to my own creative space. Another little tip with this creative space menu and the communication, they can actually return to the starting point of a space in here too. So if you forgot where the teleporter is at or got trapped somewhere, you can just do that instantly. And then you can go back to creative space too. 
or you could have just went to your career space in that menu as well. But that's just still useful if you wanted to stay in the same space. But now that we're back in our own area, let's try to use their blueprint. As I mentioned before, we're still missing parts. Let's try to place this, and it still lets us. Essentially, it uses everything that I do have, but omits everything that I don't. There is some things that I have noticed with the blueprints do, though, is that sometimes it leaves fragments that you can't do anything with. Uh, I don't know if this, like, leaves or, like, goes away when I exit the creative space. Maybe it does. I guess we'll test it out right now. So then let's go back into my space, and hopefully it's not there anymore. Yeah, so it does disappear with that fragment. I don't know what was going on there. I mean, I can try the blueprint again and delete it. I don't know if that's like a reoccurring case. And I guess it was just like a freak uh, bug or glitch there. I don't know what that was, but I guess that can occur. But that is pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about for this beginner's comprehensive guide to creative spaces. I don't even know what to call it at this point. It was definitely a lot. It's probably going pretty long. As a bonus for sticking around, there is a secret object down below the map kind of like in the dead center so if you just kind of like dig down just keep going and going and going there should eventually be a rappy statue like a emperor rappy statue if you delete this you'll get a title where it gives you the object to place around your creative spaces so it's a neat little thing hopefully today was helpful for you guys i know i'm excited to see what some of you are going to make i've already seen some pretty crazy things with the jump puzzles dj parties with like whole clubs and like the mini games i'm making some myself like tic-tac-toe red light green lights even some mario party mini games but yeah i just really want to see spaces filled up to the max uh, you can have them at 100 players at once, which is just crazy. You can have 12 people editing at once, too. It's mind-blowing, honestly, with the level of detail that they've gone with this. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys uh, think, and if there's anything else that you want to see with these creator spaces in future videos. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.